In today's tutorial, I'm coming back to something I often talk about, which is just how useful broken chords are on the piano, especially if you're into kind of pop piano or ballad styles, or if you're a songwriter, or if you just like to accompany yourself while you're singing. What I'm going to be doing is looking at a short section from one of the pieces in my new book, Seven Studies in Pop Piano, and talking about how I developed it, which was basically to look at the underlying chord sequence I come up with and then improvise on it using broken chords. Now, if you don't have a copy of the book, that's no problem at, at all, because everything we talk about today, I'm, I'm going to be including in the video. Everything you need to know, chords and the lot, it will be here. However, if you do have a copy of Seven Studies and you'd like to follow through in the score as I play this little section, um, basically we're looking at bars 17 to 32 of study number five. So that's the bottom system of page 33 through to the third system on page 34. As I say though, you, you don't need a copy of the book to uh, get the most out of this video. If you want a copy of the book, I'll, I'll explain how to get one at the end of this video. Okay, so here we go. Let me play through. We're in the key of E major. I'll play through the section, then I'll play through the basic chords and explain how I got from one to the other. Here we go. So let's have a look at the underlying chord progression that I used to develop that improvisation. Now, the first thing to know is that we are in the key of E major, which isn't a key that I use very often, and, and it's a key that pianists tend to find a little bit challenging, especially for improvisation, because it has four sharps in it. Okay, that's a lot of black notes for one key. One of the side effects of that is that chords in that key can sound when you name them, more complicated than they actually are. So when we go through this chord progression and I talk about G sharp minor over D sharp, that sounds, oh, you know, my word, Bill, that sounds like a complicated chord. Actually, it isn't, okay? It's just that we're getting, you know, adding lots of sharps into the names. So just be aware of that. I'll go through the progression quite slowly and name the chords. Rhythmically, tempo-wise, we're in 2-2 two, two time, which strictly means two beats in the bar, but we could count this in four beats, it, it, it doesn't really matter. Okay, let me, let me play through this progression. We've got E. B over D sharp. C sharp minor. A. E. G sharp minor over D sharp. A over C sharp. B. E, G sharp 7 over D sharp, we'll come back to that, C sharp minor, A, back to E, E over G sharp, A, B, okay, although actually in the, um, in the final version I kind of changed those chords a little bit at, at the end, the, the, the very final bar I played as half B and half A, but there we are, all of those chords come from the diatonic chords of E major. They are all chords that are built on the E major scale, except that G sharp seven over D sharp, okay? That is what we call a non-diatonic chord in E, and, and that's why it has that kind of, that kind of slightly unexpected kind of standout sound that, that as you'll see when we come to go through the, um, go, go through the, um, the, 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 the full piece, I kind of exploit because of, it, of, of its, you know, kind of unique sound. Okay, so what did I do with that chord progression to turn it into that kind of much more melodic and expressive arrangement? Obviously, the basic technique that's going on here is that I'm breaking up the chords and playing them in their constituent part. So I'm taking, for example, that initial chord of E, and rather than just playing it like that in the rhythm, I'm breaking up the chord and playing the individual notes, yeah? And typically rotating around those notes. You'll see that I, I'm not playing E in its root position, I'm in the second inversion of the chord down here, and 
what I'm fundamentally doing at the start there is just rotating around those notes. Something I do at the start on that very first half beat is double up a pair of notes there. So instead of just breaking up the chord simply, okay, I play two notes, I drop the E, the tonic in there as well. But that's just to give it a little bit of a push to create a bit of interest, okay? Um, and, and, and also to kind of ground it more obviously in, in the chord of E, okay? So rather than just, which I could do, I'm just giving that extra little push at the start with two notes. And when I come to the next chord, which is B over D sharp, again, I could just do this. Okay, but again, I double up those first, those first two notes. Yeah. And then what I do is something else you can do with broken chords is actually go outside of the notes of the chord. Okay, so that full bar, what I play there, let me, let me go from the start, I play the E, B over D sharp. Okay, do you see what I did there? Rather than just playing the notes of the B chord, I'm starting to go outside of that chord to find my notes, yeah? Not very far, but I'm beginning to vary, and that's how we create the musical interest in broken chord patterns. And the first time I do that is up to that G sharp. So if you wanted, you could des describe that a little bit as a, a B6 chord, okay? So that G sharp doesn't belong to the standard B chord, but it, it is part of the scale of E major, okay? And then I land just before the end, we run out of time on that bar on an E, which obviously doesn't belong in B at all, but it does belong to the next chord, C sharp minor. Okay, and I keep it hanging over into that chord. Let me go from the E chord at the start again. Okay, so we've got that note, that note from the C sharp minor chord hanging over just before we come in with the actual chord note in the left there. That's what we call anticipation. And again, that's helped to create interest both harmonically and rhythmically, because by holding on that E, that note that we end up with is twice as long as all the notes we've had so far. Yeah, okay? And it's got a little bit of extra stress, a little bit of extra punch. Just listen out for it here. Okay, do you see how that just adds a little bit of variety and a little bit of interest? And that's what improvising on broken chords in an interesting way is often all about, creating that variety and interest. Let's just have, before we move on, let's look at some other stuff that's going on. First of all, I'm pedaling on each bar. Okay, so I'm sticking stuff together with the pedal. If I didn't do that, it would sound much more bitty. Okay, you know, there's still maybe a kind of place we're playing like that, but I'm definitely using the pedal. In the left hand, what I'm doing is really, really simple. For most of that whole section, I'm just playing single notes in the left hand, okay? And it's usually the chord notes or the, um, you know, the bass note that's named in the chord. Say when we get to B over D sharp, it's a D sharp. This is a really important thing to understand. People get so hung up on their left hand. It's easy, you know, people are like, oh, oh what do I do in left hand? I need to create rhythm, I need to create harmony. And actually, no, you don't, not always. The right hand is doing all the work here. All the left hand has to do is just give us a little bit of bass sound, fill out that, that kind of bass end of the register, and also just give us a kind of harmonic grounding in the chord. Okay, so I'm keeping it really simple. Okay, let's play what we've got so far and then move on to the next little bit. Okay, that A chord, notice how, again, the, the very simple broken chord would, be, would have been something like. Okay, but I decided to drop in that F sharp, which doesn't belong to the A chord, it belongs to an A6 chord. Okay, so rather similar to what we did with the B chord earlier on actually, but it's still in the, the scale of E major. And the lovely thing about that F sharp is that it leads me very naturally back up to the G sharp for the next E chord. Okay, and now we're going up, we're getting higher, and things are getting a little bit more intense. So what I'm gonna do here is you know, mix around some of the notes in the chord, but also double up some more chord notes. 
The chord we're on now is G minor, a G, sorry, G sharp minor over D sharp. To A over C sharp. To the B chord, which is a B6 there, and it actually becomes a B7 later, later in the bar. Okay, let me just play that a little bit again. Okay, notice how every time I play two notes, it's that little extra, little extra push. And if there's a note there that's suspended from outside the chord, as often there is, so there, it's that, again, it's that little extra push of harmonic and rhythmic, and, well, not quite rhythmic interest, but of, of harmonic and dynamic interest. somewhere more comfortable with a B7 chord and then we're back to an E chord and something like what we had at the start. But now something interesting is going to happen because we have that non-diatonic chord coming up, the G sharp 7 over D sharp, followed by a C sharp minor chord. Let, let me play that whole little section. Resolving to an A. A couple of interesting things that have happened there. As I get onto the um, G sharp 7 over D sharp, the non diatonic chord, there's a kind of intensity building. So I, 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 I up the volume a little bit. And that's a lovely little stabby bit there that I can go for. Yeah, um, where are we? Look at what I'm doing down in the left. That's my first, you probably can't see it, I'm probably way out of shot, but I'm basically playing two C sharps, I don't give a part, but down here. Um, I'm playing those two C, C sharps, that's the first time in the left that I've played more than one note. And I've gone for something really rich and deep, okay? Things have grown, I've reached kind of a peak of intensity in the right hand, and that just a little soft stab in the left, again, creates contrast and interest. Let me go from the E chord again and have a listen carefully. Okay, so again, everything I'm doing is about, you know, yes, being based around that basic broken chord idea, but I'm going out of the chord, I'm using dynamics, I'm using um, doubled up notes, I, I'm using various little techniques just to add little bits of variety and little bits of tension to that basic broken chord pattern. When we get to the very end of the section, I start using a different type of broken chord in the left hand, an arpeggio. Okay, and some block chords in the right. Okay, J just to give it some um, a little bit of extra, um, a little bit of kind of extra uh, interest as we, we get ready to go into the next section. Okay. Okay. So there we go. As I hope you can see, there's nothing desperately theoretically complicated going on there. All I'm doing is taking a basic chord, breaking it up and adding a bit of variety, okay, but using the basic chord shape as my starting point. And, you know, if you're a relative beginner, you can, you can take it quite steadily at first, but if you're a more advanced player or as you're growing confidence, you can, you know, explore outside the chord and listen to the sounds you're making much more. Again, as I always say, it's that kind of exploration, experimentation, playing around by yourself at the piano that really helps you to internalize and to learn this stuff. Um, okay, so there we go. Yes, if you want to get a copy of Seven Studies in Pop Piano, by all means, um, check it out. I'll put a link underneath uh, this tutorial. There's a print edition, there's a digital edition. Everybody I've heard from so far who has got a copy really likes it. Obviously you need to be able to read music, but um, not to a particularly high level, especially for the earlier studies. And it's full of notes and useful tips and advice if you're interested in pop piano. Um, as usual, my, uh, my my kind of main book, How to Really Play the Piano, is also pretty popular. Um, if you want to know about chords and improvisation, stuff like that, that is the book. Again, you need to be able to read a bit of music, but nothing super, super complicated. Okay, there we go. We've got quite a few little tutorials coming out in the next few weeks as we, we run into the holiday season. So if you're not subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button now in the bottom right-hand corner of this video. And if you can, like and share this video to, uh, to let other people know. That would be fantastic. Okay, I'll see you again very soon.